Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me. And what else? Maria loves to talk. And what I'm talking about, you guys, I am talking about news, news, news. Another teen, Jasmine Marie Flores, Arkansas teen, arrested for severing part of her dad's ear after he took her phone away. Where did I see this? I want to say Mima. M E A W dot com. This little heifer here. Got man and daddy. So High Springs, Arkansas. Local Arkansas teen who allegedly attacked her father by stabbing him, chopping half of his ear, doing a little Mike Tyson type of thing she was doing because he snatched her cell phone. And uh, so she was arrested Tuesday, November. Again, all this stuff happened around Thanksgiving. Arrested November 22nd at 2.30 a.m. Jasmine Marie Flores, 18. She's an adult. She's a, and she needs to be tried as an adult. So they're saying that she's going to be charged with a felony count, second degree domestic battery, which carries a maximum 10 year prison sentence. I doubt if they give it to her. The 44 year old victim said his daughter used a kitchen knife to stab and cut him after they argued over her phone's music being too loud. He claimed that he approached his daughter and snatched her phone, which made her extremely upset. She then seized a set of nearby scissors and started poking him in the chest while demanding the return of her phone. I'm kind of thinking that they've had issues before. I just don't see because I know, I, yeah, it's been a long time since I was a kid. But when my dad or my stepfather told us to do something, we did it. I don't care. We were mad. We better not let them know or show that we were mad. We better not. I guess those days are gone. I guess those those, pre, what, those are prehistoric days. You better not let them know you mad. You better not mumble anything. Yo, uh, elder tell you, first of all, these kids, especially at 18, you in their home. They're not in your home. You're in their home, and they're the one paying bills. So if you don't like the rules, get out. He claims Flores attempted to cut him with the scissors while grabbing him by the throat. How big is this girl? As a result, he drew back from her. He said, I thought that would be the end of it because she is my baby girl. Man, she fixing to get you. Delete you, daddy. Flores allegedly got a kitchen knife from the sink and attempted to cut him but he only only slid his jacket he then returned the cell phone to her and attempt to make her stop flores reportedly attacked her father again with the knife after regaining control of the phone cutting him on the side of his forehead on his neck beneath his chin and slicing his left ear Flores allegedly followed her father as he ran to the apartment of a girl. Dude, what? Grown ass man, the daddy. You let your 18 year old daughter that you brought into the world run you out of your apartment and he go run to a neighbor, a female neighbor's house enough to get her in trouble, get her deleted. Flores followed the victim into the apartment. She followed her dad into that woman's apartment. And she said, I should have hurt you worse before leaving and returning to their apartment. The victim and the neighbors told, both told the deputies what happened. I don't know where the mama is. Okay, so he apparently chose against... Okay, so he, the daddy didn't want to go to the EMS or he didn't want to go with the EMS. He drove himself to St. Vincent uh, Hospital for treatment. Um, as the old saying, spare the rod, spoil the child. And it's the reason it's, it goes like that. I don't know where her mom, I don't know if it's just him and her living alone. Um, they're saying here, while the father was being examined by LifeNet, life the deputies were given written consent by the man to visit the residence and talk with Flores. Deputies allegedly discovered Flores on the bed, just inside the door, with a black handle knife in the waist of her pants. 
when they went inside, when they entered Flores reportedly yanked the knife out of her jeans and placed it close to her on the bed for the protection of the officer. Garrett told, took the knife and set it down on a table. Deputies discovered a second knife with a brown handle on a table next to the front door. Officers then photographed the father's injuries. Flores, who shows no past criminal history, is being held on zero bond and is scheduled to be arraigned on January the 2nd. I wouldn't want that little winch back at my house. I don't know if, if daddy uh, was spoiling her. I don't know where the mama at. I don't know. I mean, all I can say is this is prime example. You can't start raising kids at 18. That's something that should be, you should be doing, training them from toddler on to uh, junior middle school and then up to that. Not They obviously had some issues uh, prior to that. Maybe that's why mama's not in the house. She's scared, she ran off. Okay, this one right here is even, it's just, it's crazy. A Greenville woman charged with Failey shooting husband on Thanksgiving Day. North Carolina, y'all just stay in the news. Greenville, North Carolina, at approximately 12 a.m. on Friday, November the 25th, officers were called to, they put these people addresses and everything out. I'm not going to read the lady's address. Upon their arrival, officers found 31-year-old Travion Williams, deceased, or deleted from an apparent gunshot wound. A pre preliminary investigation revealed Williams and his wife, 30-year-old Latoria Anderson, were involved in a dispute in the front yard. What y'all doing? 12 a.m.? A dispute on the front yard? At some point during the altercation, Anderson reportedly shot her husband. Following investigative interviews, Anderson was charged with an open count of murder and booked in the Pitt County Detention Center. A booking photo is available. The investigation is ongoing. Additional details are not available. They didn't say, oh, is she still in jail? What's her? I don't, I don't see anything. I guess they still got her in jail. I don't know what could have happened, but hey, let me read to you and tell you what a little bit of the Facebook family is saying here. But they love gossip. Uh, Trey was a bit of a player, but a good daddy to his kids. I really liked him. My nephew is now without his daddy just because she pulled a trigger. But the good Lord will take care of that woman. All of those kids without a dad and a mom, stepmom now, such a tragedy. This lady here, I don't know if she's, she said he's her nephew. I don't know if he's her bio nephew or step nephew. This couple, I mean, I don't know what the dude look like, but the woman, this lady is black, so I don't know if her husband is, if, if he's a white guy or what, but this lady is saying, and she looks like a blonde. She's saying that's her nephew. Uh, I was wondering why she was saying he was a bit of a player, but he, they, they got kids together. Where were the kids? Did you did you do this in front of your kids? Did they see you delete the daddy? Everybody's saying rest in peace. Thanksgiving. Holidays is the time for love, happiness, uh, memories, love, romance, eating good food, drinking good drinks, uh, dancing, uh, freshening up on your dance. Cleaning your house up. I'm just saying. Decorating your house up. I mean, getting new furniture. I don't understand this. I was trying to see if anybody else was saying anything. I don't I don't know. I don't know if maybe she went through his phone and saw some numbers, saw some pictures. Uh, prayers go out to that young man. That's sad. Moving on. Delano Burks. This happened in Houston. A handsome young man. I think I mentioned that he reminded me of the dude version of Shanquilla Robinson. I'm just saying. Uh, body of missing man found floated in Port of Houston. So he was 
in the ship channel, but he went out partying with his, his guy friends. And I'm gonna keep it real because y'all know I do it. Married dudes, married females, you need to hang out with, with people on your level. The best place for a married dude, especially a young married dude, is to be at home with your woman, your wife, and your kids, or with your family, barbecuing, blah, blah, blah. Being out there in the streets with your single guy friends, especially with some who are probably jealous because you're a successful businessman and they want what you have. Just saying. Okay, so here, the body of a 26-year-old man missing for almost two weeks was recovered from the port of use and according to medical examiners. Texas AccuSurge found a Tim Miller spent days looking for 26-year-old Delano Burks. The young man was last seen November the 13th. November the 13th, he was missing. They just found him two weeks out there. I don't know if he was in the ship channel and in the water. And that's the first thing I came to me because when I was talking to my sister about it, I said, you know what? Isn't there a water or a lake somewhere in that area where he was out clubbing with his friends? I said, I bet you he he fell into that water, into that bio. Okay, so here they said a tugboat crew found Burke's body Friday in the Houston Ship Channel, roughly 12 miles down the White Oak Bayou from where he was last seen. Okay, so they saying just like I, I, I had thought. Okay, so they're saying here, we put a lot of effort. That's the EcuSearch man. We knew that it was him, but of course, we had to wait for process of IVD. Miller said the bar where Burst was last seen is only about half a mile from the bio. Police have not said if they believe Burks fell in the water on his own or was there foul play involved. The case has been turned over to the HPD homicide unit. So I know they said something about his mom and family members uh, feel that it was something sinister. They don't really believe it. I saw the poor mom, young woman, and he looks just like her, attractive family. She was saying that they had been out every day looking for him, looking, hoping that he was going to still be alive. So here they're saying, Burke's, uh, meanwhile, Burke's family want answers about what happened to 26 year old. His mother, Karen Jeffley, begged for the public's help on uh because i think she was on tv uh he was with a friend i thought they said he was with several friends now they say he was with a friend that had that he hadn't seen in a while they left him at the club his family says burke friends left him without his car or id and his cell phone and ran out of battery in surveillance video, he can be seen stumbling near McIntyre. I guess it's the restaurant or the club. Jeffrey acknowledges he was tipsy at the time, but says the family believes he may have been drugged. They are drugging men. Yeah, it's a possibility. Police said they're still trying to figure out what happened that night. So the police still don't know. Uh, they are not suggesting he was drugged. It hasn't been ruled out. They don't know until they do the autopsy. Remember I told y'all in a previous story when I did the Felicia um, Johnson story, uh, that family member, a friend of a friend, they had went out to a club, Nigerian owned club. It, it's Nigerian owned club. It's just a regular club, really fancy club. And the chick was trying to get them who was sitting at a different table, was trying to get these girls to get a drink. She kept offering every couple of minutes, let me buy you a drink, let me, and they kept saying, no, no, we don't want it. When they walked out, they saw the same girl at the car talking to some dudes in a brand new Mercedes, and they heard, or one of the girls heard her say, I tried to get them, but I couldn't. I did try, I kept trying, but they, I, I couldn't get them. So yeah, there, there's people out there and I really believe the bartenders are in on it. Just saying, really sad. Prayers go out to that family. Almost to the end, missing teen boy found deleted in shallow grave, phone track to sex offenders home. This is on, what is this on? This is recent too. This says November 20. 2022. A Virginia, a Virginia teen who vanished this month, early this month, reportedly found deceased in a shallow grave. 
family members tell WTVR that Sion, C-I-O-N, Carol's body was discovered in Lunenburg County. The body was reportedly sent to medical examiner for positive identification and Virginia State Police spokesman, spokesperson uh, Corrine Geller said it has been investigated as homicide. This is a kid, this is a child, and they treated him like he was, uh, I don't know, an old toy, old newspaper. Carol's relatives told WTVR that the 17-year-old was last seen at his grandmother's home in Kenbridge on November the 2nd. The family claimed that there might be witnesses in this case, but they are not speaking out. Meanwhile, authorities told WRIC that Carol's phone was last traced to the home of a sex offender. Relatives also spoke with the news outlet claimed that a tattoo was found on the body which matched the one Carol has on his arm. They're not giving any information. I keep saying uh, sex offender home. What's the name of the... Um, What's the name of the, the, the person? What's his name? I mean, they're not giving any information. We've got young men going missing. I don't know if it's the body snatchers getting these people or what. Is it Jason? Is it, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know, the candy man. So here, recent BY, BYU Idaho graduate, Idaho again in the news, Idaho graduate uh, deleted in Georgia police arrest friend. Where will we be without these so-called friends? So-called friends, you guys, um, like that little uh, old song, uh, friends stab you in the back or something. We're heartbroken. We feel betrayed because it's a friend who has been accused as his father. This is November 14, 2022, uh, Desert News. Nice looking young guy. Uh, it says here, uh, family and friends are mourning the brutal killing of a new BYU Idaho graduate and former missionary. He's a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Later Day Saints, remembering him for his wit, potential, talents, and what one friend called radical kindness. Aaron William Davis, 21, of Cumming, Georgia, was approximately 20 times in Floyd County Deputy Corona Chris Giles told the uh, Desert News. His body was found uh, buried under a few inches of dirt beneath a fallen oak tree in a remote area of Rome, Georgia on Saturday. Most of you have heard by now that our son Aaron was savagely taken from us. This is what his father saying. Randy Davis wrote on Facebook. Sad. We've heartbroken and we feel betrayed because it's a friend. Police arrested Brandon Christopher Rice in 21 on Saturday and booked him on a suspicion of murder and concealing the death. Davis and Reisner has been members of the later, later day Saints congregation since teenagers. Before the Reisner family moved to Rome, Reisner has stayed in the Davis home many times. Reisner also attended BYU Idaho for a semester in the fall of 2021. This is also sounding like, again, the Shanquilla Robinson story, her and Cahill. This dude here that did this to this poor guy, his parents opened the door, let him stay in the home. This also sounds like the, the other one I did, and please check out my video, the Sarah Main uh, story in Maryland. Uh, family let her boyfriend stay in the home, took him on vacations, fed him, and uh, did all that, and he turned around and just deleted pretty much the whole family. So here they're asking, who was Aaron William Davis? Davis was born in Rhode Island and raised in Massachusetts before his family moved to Georgia in 2011. He graduated Forsyth, uh, North Forsyth High School where he was known for his friendliness. And he looked like a pretty nice little clean cut dude. Uh, you can see how many lies he touched by his Facebook post, says his dad. He had the ability to be to befriend uh, to those that maybe he didn't have a friend. He was never, uh, he was never 
Mr. Popularity. He was Mr. Everyman. Trying to figure out here what, why did the guy do it? I don't know. They're, they're not saying what happened. Okay. Rome is halfway between Cumming, Georgia, where Aaron Davis lived with his family, and Glasson, Alabama, where his girlfriend lived. So he had a little girlfriend. Randy Davis said the Davis family last saw and spoke with Aaron on Thursday. He planned to drive 60 miles to Rome and stay Thursday night with his friend Brandon. Uh, then he would uh, drive another 60 miles on Friday to see his girlfriend. On Friday, Aaron's girlfriend tried to reach him, but his cell phone was off. Reisner texted her to say Aaron's phone was dead and that uh, his plans had changed. He would stay with Reisner on Friday, then drive to Alabama on Saturday. The Davis family had, uh, had no cause for concern until Saturday after Rome police received a report of an abandoned vehicle. They called Randy uh, Davis to ask about Aaron's car, which they had found in a ditch as if it had been rolled into the ditch purposely. Aaron's mother, Sarah Resnick Davis, posted a plea on Facebook. So his mama, she in the dark, she don't know either. So she's saying, help, help, help. We cannot get a hold of our son, Aaron Davis. The police in Rome, Georgia, just called my husband saying that his car was found in a ditch. Also sound like that other young man, um, the young Robinson guy, the geologist, Daniel Robinson, too. Okay, why did police arrest Brandon? After the car was found, Randy Davis reported Aaron missing uh, in the Davis called area hospitals. Police also began the search in Old East Rome. Signs of foul play were discovered at the location. Mr. Davis was last known to have been, according to the police. Criminal investigation arrived and collected crime scene evidence. Witnesses on the scene were cooperative with investigators. Rome police went to interview Reisner, but during the interview, Reisner fled. Randy Davis said, well, that's a big sign. They interviewing you and you run off. That's, that's, you know. The accused committed the act of obstruction of law enforcement when he ran from officers during an investigation of a missing person. The police report Ryson later turned himself in. As the investigation continued and leads were followed, the deceased body of Mr. Davis was discovered uh, off of Tumlin Drive. Aaron Davis' body was found six to eight in a in a six to eight foot hole. I don't know what happened? I don't know if he was a little druggy or if, if he wanted money from this other guy. Randy and Sarah have six children. They lost an eight-month-old boy in an accident drowning 15 years ago. That's um, the young man that was deceased, that was uh, killed, we, that was deleted. We know that one day we'll be reunited. We're so happy that he was born in the convent and we will forever, uh, he will forever be with us. It's hard, but I think it should be harder if we didn't have faith and trust enough the atonement of Jesus Christ and our Savior's plan that we will see him again. He will always be a part of our eternal family. So that's good. They they have um, Jesus Christ. Um, they don't have hate towards the so-called friend, but I don't think I could be so sweet about it. I mean, I know he knows his son is in a better place, but... This is not what a family expect from a so-called friend that you have fed, clothed, lives in your home. You treat it as if they were one of your own kids. That's not what you expect for you to take out my kid that I'm expecting to reap what I sow. I'm expecting uh, my investment to come back. Because basically when parents send their kids off to college or whatever, you're expecting your investments, what you just put in to come back. You're not expecting it for it to just, you know, just go out the door um, in that way. So again, you guys, let's lift these people up in prayers. Um, also lift your kids up, send the white light, put the white light out there, light a candle uh, for answers. Um, and also for your, 
just other people's kids because this stuff is it's weird you know we we can't trust our friends anymore you can't trust your kids you, you tell them hey go get this or go do that or put lower the music i mean golly hey you guys thank you for joining me at what else maria loves to talk